Hi there, my name is Matthew. I'm a strategic systems consultant here at Quest. Today I'd like to step through probably the most basic thing that you can do with GPU Admin, a simple edit workflow for a GPO. But through this, I think we'll see in a lot more detail how GPU Admin kind of does what it does. So my first step is I'm gonna go ahead and launch the GPU Admin client. GPU Admin doesn't act as a snap-in to GPMC uh, in the way that, for instance, Microsoft's Advanced Group Policy Management product does. It does have a legacy snap-in client, but for modern capability, GPU Admin has its own client. Now you'll notice when I logged in here, it automatically connected me to a server. So this is the GPU Admin server, and right now I'm connected as my MVinton account, which has essentially full rights over everything within GPU Admin. I can see everything. It is a administrator or it's in the administrator's trustee list. I can expand the version control root and see everything within this. But today what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually walk through this process as a more typical end user. So I'm gonna right click here and make another connection to GPU Admin. So rather than choosing connect and using my MVinton account, Instead, I'm gonna leverage an account that I use called MVA Irwin. Now this account doesn't have any native rights in Active Directory. The only rights this account has are those that have been granted through GPU Admin to do the work this account needs to do. And you'll notice as I'm looking at GPU Admin as my administrative account, I can, again, see everything. I can see all these containers, and we're gonna talk about containers more in depth in a later video. But just know that the view, when I look at GPU Admin through the eyes of Abby Irwin, the MVA Irwin account, is much more restricted than my full account. Specifically, when I expand the version control root, you can see that she only has rights to three containers. And she also doesn't have rights to the live environment. Now, this is a really important thing and something we're going to return to back kind of throughout the course of this video series. But in reality, administration of GPU admin is driven through the version control root. So rather than, you know, accessing the live environment, you know, finding the GPOs and the OUs kind of through those sort of traditional methods. Instead, it's usually more efficient to do that through the version control route instead. In fact, you don't necessarily even need to expose the live environment to your end users, although you could. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this Vinton container. And you'll notice that there's a GPO in here called MV Server GPO. Now, Abby is a member of a role that for these three containers has the rights to be able to edit GPOs, to be able to deploy GPOs, to be able to do some reporting and a few other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this GPO and I'm gonna choose edit. And when I do this, GPO admin is going to do a couple of things. It's going to check out the policy and it's gonna go ahead and open an editing window. So here's my editing window. And from here, you know, my uh, end user does have the right to be able to set security filters as well as WMI filters. She does not have the rights to affect advanced security. But in this case, what I'd like to do is make a settings change to this GPO. So I'm gonna click launch editor. Now this gets a little technical, but it's a really important thing to understand about how GPU admin works. When I launch editor, you can see here that it just launches GP edit. This is the Microsoft GP edit. This is not quest code at all. And the reason why we do this the way that we do it is this allows GPU admin to be compatible with, well, every group policy that's able to be edited through GP edit. That includes uh, policies that rely on server-side extensions, you know, ADMX files, as well as client-side extensions. The one drawback to this approach, though, is that GPEdit is only able to address 
a group policy that exists within Syswell, that is actually within Active Directory. We can't just simply point it to our version control store, which is you know an offline store that GPU Admin has. It has to point to a live object. So in order to kind of get around this limitation, what we do is we create a temporary copy when we're editing called GPU Admin Working Copy dash a GUID. So if we take a look at GPMC, click refresh and sort by modified, you can see that we have a policy here that was modified, well, just a moment ago. Uh, it was actually created just a moment ago. And this is what I'm literally editing. And this policy is not, um, uh, this policy is not linked to anything, so any changes we make here isn't, aren't going to affect anything within the environment. And also importantly, this policy, if we take a look at what it's equal to, the GPU admin service account has naturally has full rights to it. But additionally, my end user, the end interactive user I'm using, has the edit settings right to it. And the reason why this is the case is because when I'm using GPEdit, I am using it in an interactive context. It will literally be the Abby Irwin account that is interacting with that object in Syswall. So it needs to be acted that way. Let's go ahead and make a quick change. Expand policies here and be very patient as my uh, central ADMX store enumerates. And I'm just going to choose a setting at random in here to change. Sure, add non-default accelerators. We're going to disable that capability, which is okay. And now when I click close here, of course, in native group policy management, this is when the change would actually be made. For GPU admin, when I click close, that working copy has now changed but my actual policy that I have in Active Directory has not. So I'll turn back to GPU Admin, and now I've been editing it. I'm gonna click OK. And you'll notice here that the status is still checked out. This means that it is exclusive to me. I could launch the editor window again and make another change. In this particular case, I'm going to check in. By checking in, what's gonna happen is GPU Admin is gonna take that working copy it's going to make a subversion in its version control store. It's going to make version 28.1. With GPU admin, the point versions are always non deployed versions. They exist only within GPU admin. Major, version, uh, major versions, such as you know, this one is version 28, those are released versions. Those are versions that have been pushed into production. So I could have 28.1. I could right click on that. I could uh, check it out again. I could make uh, more changes, check back in, make it version 28.2. I could have a colleague that also has rights. You know, once it's in available status, check it out, check it in, make version 28.3. Ultimately, what I'm going to end up with, though, is at some point I'm going to be done working with uh, GPU admin. I'm oh, sorry, working with the, the group policy object, and I'm going to need to push that to production. So let's say we've reached that point now. Now, my user, Abby Irwin, has rights to be able to deploy into production. If I right click here, you'll notice that she does not have a deploy menu option. And this is because this object requires approval before it can be changed in production. And this is set at the version control container level. I'm going to go ahead and request approval now. It's going to go through the approval process that I have specified at that container level. Now, in this lab, this approval process is very simple. It simply goes to my Mvinton account. Now, as Mvinton, I could take this login and I could go and I could look and I could find that it is pending approval. But more commonly, uh, approvers are going to know about this through an email. So GPU admin is almost always at some level email integrated. 
mostly because otherwise it'd be very difficult to know when you need to approve an email. And you can set GPU admin to kind of two different levels, either send only or send and receive, or what we call like basically full or workflow integrated. That's how this is set up. You'll notice this email that I received has a settings report, has a difference report. If I take a look at this difference report, it will show me clear as day what exactly was changed. So I know what I'm improving. And then it has two buttons here at the bottom, approve and reject. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve this. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a specially crafted email message. And I'm going to send this and it's going to go back into the GPO admin uh, mailbox. And GPO admin then periodically checks that. It's about once every couple, three minutes. So it might take just a minute here, but it will periodically check that uh, mailbox and process those emails, whether it's an approve or reject. GPU admin has the ability to do this. We're gonna delve much more into the technical aspects of this in a, in a following video, but it has the ability to integrate with both Exchange on-premises, Exchange online, as well as the G Suite in order to both send out messages as well as to process approvals uh, that are sent back in. All right, and we can see now that GPU admin has processed, processed that approval. It sent a message uh, back to me saying, hey, this has been successfully approved, good job. And if I go back into GPU admin now as Abby Irwin, quick refresh here, you'll notice that the status of this policy has changed from pending approval to pending deployment. Now, when I right click on it, you'll notice that the deploy option is available to me. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And now I could choose to either deploy it immediately, or if I have a change window set up for a later date, I could select that and just schedule it for that change window. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to do that immediately. Click okay. And now what GPM is going to do is it's going to take that version that's on disk, that's in its version control store, and it's going to overwrite the policy in Active Directory. So if I take a look back here in GPMC, click refresh, sort by modified, you can see that my MV server GPO has changed, been changed as of a few seconds ago. So that right there is the like very bare bones sort of workflow and approval and change process. There's a lot more that we're gonna dive into in later videos, but uh, this is kind of the core that we're gonna work from. Thanks.